There is no such thing as immaterial matter. All spirit is matter, but it is more fine or pure. But when our bodies are purified, we shall see that it is all matter. Panpsychism, the idea that all matter has some level of consciousness or mind. Ontological, pertaining to the nature of being. The, the ontological significance of consciousness is equivalent to the ontological significance of being, because the mystery, the mystery question is, how is there anything without awareness of it? And, and good luck, good luck solving that issue. And, and even if it is reducible to the material, my answer to that is, well, that'll just make material transcendent in a way that we don't understand. So you don't know anything about matter at the fundamental quantum level, let's say. It's so mysterious and peculiar. Among, I think it was cognitive scientists that you were discussing, that discussion of panpsychism has become non heretical because there's notion that there's a mystery in matter see it isn't materialism in, in exactly that's the fault perhaps perhaps it's it's deterministic clockwork materialism that's essentially newtonian and right. and we know that's not right i mean it's proximally right but 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 beyond that it's not right matter is very deep mystery and i can't see how you can get rid of the problem of consciousness by positing a materialist substrate when there's no way that you can get rid of the metaphysics of matter. So I agree with you. I mean, I think those the, the, the problem with the new atheists is not so much their atheism, it's their a priori commitment to the doctrine of metaphysical naturalism. Metaphysical naturalism, the idea that all that exists is the physical or natural. Which is roughly the idea that all truths are scientific truths or reducible to scientific truths. Uh, and it's a non-starter. The far more interesting golden thread that you talked about earlier, the, sometimes known as the perennial philosophy. Yes, exactly uh, that. The perennial philosophy, the idea of common roots in all spiritual or mystic traditions. It is the thought that, that being, uh, capital B, being, is, is the, the fundamental metaphysical question. What, I mean, David Chalmers, who's, maybe the most the most well-known cognitive scientist studying consciousness you know he's he 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 has one set of the hard question you know the hard question about consciousness but for me the hard question is the question of being itself because i can't distinguish between being and awareness intelligence or the light of truth was not created or made neither indeed can be all truth is independent in that sphere in which god has placed it to act for itself, as all intelligence also. Otherwise, there is no existence. You can think, well, there's an objective world without subjectivity. It's like, well, try to think that through and see how far you get. It just, you just run into problem after problem with it. And, and I mean, there's technical problems at the level of physics as well, but there's certainly mm. metaphysical problems. Mm. And so, mm. so then the question is, well, what is the, what is the cosmological significance of consciousness? Mm. And, and that, that's a central question, right? Maybe that's the central question. And, and when I look at the inside of a Christian cathedral and I see the logos spread out against the sky, because that's what the dome is, it's affiliated with the sun, there's this proposition that consciousness is what engenders reality itself and that we partake in that. And, and let's say we abandon that notion. It's like, okay, well then do you have any dignity as an individual? And then we get into the postmodern question is, well, are you there as an individual as all, at all? Or are you just, this is part of the identity issue, are you just one of your immutable physiological characteristics, right? Your sex, your gender, your race, that's matter, man. And there's no individual soul there. Well, why can't I just reduce you to that? What are you gonna use as an argument? Very quickly, I mean, you mentioned David Chalmers, as you say, he, uh, this brilliant young philosopher who in 1994 published his PhD thesis, The Conscious Mind, which brought back in, onto the table the, what he called the hard problem of consciousness. Uh, and he passed that in different ways, that there's something absolutely irreducible about qualitative experience. But the problem that then opens up, that, he, that then I think leads him towards taking panpsychism very, very seriously, this is just really in the last 10 years, I think, is the idea, well, okay, we've got consciousness, it's a hard problem, we just can't get rid of it. And yet we can't get rid of matter either, we can't get rid of the, the truths of the physical sciences, and we, but we can't work out how on earth these fit together. 
They couldn't be laws of nature. They couldn't be psychoanalytic or psychological laws. The laws of thought are fundamentally different from the laws of nature. So how do we fit these two together? And panpsychism at that point, though it might seem crazy to the person on the street, suddenly starts to seem quite an, attra a, a, an attractive account of the nature of ultimate reality. And I suppose just, to, just as a, a quick footnote to that, once you're there, materialism, Dawkinsian materialism is, is, is Dickensian and long gone. And the dialogue between the perennial philosophy and, pan, and Anglophone philosophy of panpsychists is back on. There's this insistence in, in the Judeo-Christian tradition that God is outside of the material world and outside of time and space. And that what that does in some sense is deaden material. It deadens matter. And then when God disappears, we're left with dead matter. So, so where's the dialogue between the, the advocates of the Judeo-Christian tradition and the panpsychists? Well, uh, th 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 there's only one time that Aquinas ever loses his cool in about 10 million words that, that, that he wrote. But one is with this poor guy called David of Dinan, who dared to suggest that God might be a material being, uh, which, to which Aquinas said, uh, quia est idiotus, which is simply stupid. <laughs> so the, the idea that the, that the creator could be somehow bound up with his creation was a simple logical in impossibility within Abrahamic monotheism. Is there any difference between the mind-body problem and the God, the spirit, and the material world problem? Are they the same problem on two different planes? Uh, Jordan, that's an extremely uh, acute question, and it's one that has uh, puzzled me for, for, for a long time, or at least attracted me. I think you're absolutely right to say that there are all sorts of interesting structural, metaphysical, and theoretical parallels between understanding and fathoming the God-world relation and, as it were, the mind-world relationship, the human mind. Or uh, the physical, soul, uh, or the soul-world relationship, right? Be For man is spirit, the elements are eternal, and spirit and element, inseparably connected, receive a fullness of joy. The elements are the tabernacle of God, yea, man is the tabernacle of God. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want more content, including the podcast, go to thoughtful-faith.com. Thanks for watching.